Welcome to day 44. Uh, we're going to be factoring, a couple of days of factoring. Today is mostly review of grade 10 and 11 factoring. Um, so I'm going to try and go fairly quickly. Slow it down when you need to, but um, factoring. Um, we're going to get into factoring by first expanding, and we've done a little bit of this already. Um, expanding uh, something like this just means to remove brackets, that sort of thing. Uh, in this case, it's just a monomial times a monomial, monomial times monomial, number parts first, then x parts, add the exponents, 2 and 5 or 7, uh, then the y parts, um, add the exponents, here, when I remove the brackets, I multiply everything in front times everything inside the brackets, and each arrow represents a multiply question. Each time, I need to multiply number parts and letter parts. Good. Uh, and two brackets, a binomial times a binomial, um, some people think of this as FOIL, doesn't matter. I just need to multiply everything times everything. So I'm going to go x times x, x times 7, negative 4 times x, negative 4 times 7, and then write that all out. And notice here, I've got some like terms that I can put together. Right now I'm done. There's no more like terms. I leave it like that. Similarly for this one, multiply everything times everything. Collect like terms. Good. And this one, multiply everything times everything now. Again. AX minus AY plus BX minus BY. And no like terms. I just got to leave it all like that, right, somehow. Uh, just lots of letters there. All right, that is expanding, right? And the whole idea of factoring is the opposite of what we just did, okay? Um, recall that factoring is the opposite process as expanding. Um, and so when we went like this, and we said that that was equal to x squared uh, plus 3x minus 28 plus 3x, well, this one was a plus, minus 28, that this direction is expanding. This direction, on the other hand, when we went from this to writing, writing it as a product of the two binomial factors, that's factoring. This is what we're spending, actually we'll spend quite a little time on, on factoring. Um, this one is kind of like the, the first, first question, um, kind of like that one, right? Kind of looks like, kind of like, looks like that one, but there's no minus in front. The idea here is I'm going to find the greatest common factor. This is this is a common factor question. All right, how do I find the greatest common factor? Well, yeah, I undo all that multiplying I did for. What's the biggest number part that divides into both? Well, 3. What's the biggest x part that divides into both? Well, x, just a single x, because if I put x2 there, I wouldn't be, like, there's no two x's to take out of this one, so it's the biggest number that I can take out without messing things up. So, two y's there, and three y's there, y squared. This is the GCF, right? So that right there, change my color, this is the GCF. Okay? Greatest common factor. Then how do I figure out what's left inside? Well, and this is review, so it should be easy. It's basically all the factors that are left over, right? So when I took a 3 out of 15, what's left over is a 5. When I took an x out of x squared, well, that was just an x. If I took 
a Y squared out of Y squared, well, there's no Y squareds left, right? So they're gone. Uh, I took a 3 out of negative 9, it's negative 3. Um, and I took an X out, so the Xs are gone. I took two Ys out, so I'm just left with a Y. And that's what's left. And notice on the inside, there's no factors left over, so I know that I got my greatest common factor when I was looking for it. Um, some people like to think of this stuff inside as these are dividing questions, right? The, the answers for the dividing questions. So, for instance, that first one is 15x squared y squared divided by 3xy squared. And, and factoring is, you know, the opposite of expanding. Expanding is multiplying. So, in a way, this is dividing. So this divide here was nine negative nine x y cubed over three x y squared. These little questions we do in our head usually, but if you have a tough time doing them, maybe you want to write them out. I I, I never do. You you probably can handle it without it. This one's quite like like this one up here, right? So. Um, here, I know I'm going to end up with two brackets. The question is, is what goes inside? I can see the first term is going to be x, but what goes in here? Well, if you remember back from grade 10, this is this number game. Like, where did the negative 28 come from? Well, it came from 7 times negative 4. Where did the 3 come from? Well, it came from 7 plus negative 4. So it's answering these factoring questions is just answering a little number game. What numbers multiply to get to the last one and add to get the middle one? Well, what are some numbers that multiply to get 21, 7, and 3? I got to make sure that the, the signs line up. Negative 7 and positive 3 gives me negative 21, and that's what works when I add them, right? If I would have had positive 7 and negative 3, I would have got positive 4 and known my signs are messed up. Well, how does this help? Well, those are my numbers. All right? And there's the minus 7 and positive 3. That gives us negative 4. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And I can check it, and I've got it. Sometimes we'll have these ones that have... Uh, can I move this down a little bit? Eh, yeah, I can do that without cheating too much. Um, they've got M's and N's. We don't really worry about it. It'll It'll all work out. I know it's going to be something, you know, M and N, and I'm going to have an M and an N here. I just got to figure out what the numbers are that go with the N's. I can see there's no numbers that will go with the M's because M times M is M squared, but there's going to be some numbers here with the N, and again, it's a number game. Numbers that multiply to get 7 and add to get 8. 7 and 1 are the only things that work, right? So I go plus 7 plus 1, and, but I wouldn't always write that 1 in there. You can leave that out if you like. And these are what I would call, these ones here are called simple trinomials. Simple trinomials. They're simple trinomials because the number in front of the x squared or m squared term is just 1. These ones are different. I've got no common factor. There's nothing that will divide evenly into all four of these things, but something's going on. The first two have A's, and the second two have twos. So instead of common factoring the entire thing, maybe, maybe I'll just take a factor out of the first two. Right? I'll take an A out of the first two because there's no A over here. Right? So when I take an A out, I'm left with M plus N. And I see a minus 2. I'm going to take a minus 2 out of these ones. Negative 2 goes into this one, M time. Now, do you see this? Look, that right there is now a common factor. This whole thing is one term. This whole thing is another term. And that bracket, M plus N, itself is a common factor. So I can write that common factor, just like if it was a big X, and that was a big X, and it was kind of like this, isn't it? Well, that's just a common factor of X. When I put the common factor in front, well, when I put the common factor in front, it's a bracket, right? It's a bracket. Well, what's left 
on the inside, well, it's the same as this one. What's le left when I take the bracket out of this first term is A. What's left when I take the bracket out of this, this uh, second term, well, it's minus 2. And that one was quite like this one from the three-minute review when we expanded, right? This is a special, and I don't know how many people have done this before. This is called factor by grouping. Where we put that one into a group, we put that into a group, and we fact factor by grouping. That's what that's called. Let's try another one like that. Um, and so I see, you see this has got an X and a Y, and there's an X and a Y, so. Well, what can I take out of the first two terms? I can take a 4, right? When I take a 4 out of the first two terms, what's left? I got X minus 3Y, right? 4 times 3 is 12. What can I take out of, out of the second two terms? Well, I can take an A. That kind of looks weird, but when I do, there's X and minus 3y and again this thing has to be exactly the same otherwise you can't do it by group uh, by grouping well now I'm going to take that common factor which is the whole bracket that's the whole bracket out front now what's left on the inside well when I take the bracket out I'm left with 4 when I take the bracket out I'm left with a and that's it uh, let's see about how we're doing for time Okay, I'm going to stop there and then we'll do, these are the hard trinomials, we'll start those in part two.